This is Nephrology Nursing Perspectives, the official podcast of the American Nephrology Nurses Association. Hey everyone, this is Lillian Pryor, your host of Nephrology Nursing Perspectives. This year, 2024, marks ANNA's 55th anniversary, and we are kicking off a new season of our official podcast with a special Nurse on the Street episode. In April, I attended the 2024 ANNA National Symposium held in Orlando, Florida. While there, I met up and spoke with a few of our ANNA members and symposium attendees as we celebrated ANNA's milestone anniversary together. They shared their nursing and symposium experiences with me, and I'm delighted to share our conversations with you. Stay tuned to Nephrology Nursing Perspectives as we delve into the perspectives of our nephrology leaders and the nursing community. So sit back, relax, and enjoy. I am proud to present to you these testimonials from the 2024 ANNA National Symposium. Yeah, the requirement was that um, you had to have published something. Um, okay. It's just for nurses or technicians if you wanted to join the association, or you had to present something that you had published. And I thought, wait a minute, you know, we all just that. started yeah. this, you know. We were not there yet. So anyway, you know, I think they got rid of that pretty fast. <laughs> Makes sense. Okay. Okay. Nice, nice. And that was in Philadelphia. In ASA. Well, that was, yeah, right after that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. But it was definitely an interesting time. But we were all going there because of uh, the physicians encouraged us to go. Nice. And um, the, the head of our department at the time. Um, he was um, he was total bench research, okay. and so Larry Wesson was his name. Mm-hmm. He came from Wesson Oil. Oh, okay. <laughs> so <There's laughs> so when we did lipid dialysis in the old tubs, mm-hmm. we used mm-hmm. Wesson Oil. <laughs> ANA does a remarkable job of engaging members, and I'm really hoping that ASN can learn. From, um, from that expertise. And finally, I fundamentally believe that uh, finding areas of collaboration uh, will also help us to clarify our respective priorities. Uh, during the joint leadership discussions that we had in December between ANA and ASN, we've developed several shared priorities that will be uh, really useful in advancing us together. And um, so with that in mind, I'd like to to ask you a question. (laughs) Um, Given these reasons for the ANA and ASN to partner together, what do you understand are the top goals for this collaboration? Thank you for asking. Um, (laughs) There are three main goals for this collaboration. The first one is related to workforce. Um, We want to improve the kidney care workforce to critically care for patients. This is not only to increase the number of nurses and doctors, but we also want to be there for those individuals that are already in the field and working on kidney care every day. Number two is to support ANA and ASN and advocating together. We want to do this advocating together and to be able to find those issues that are important to both of us. And then number three is we're jointly focused on advancing health equity and DEI, not only in the workforce, but also in the patient's lives that we care for. So I am here in the exhibit hall with Paula. What's your last name, Paula Richards? Richards. I knew that. And she is explaining to me just something new and that we've probably been needing for a long time. I'm at the leadership table. So tell me a little bit about the ANNA volunteer roadmap uh, for the chapter versus the national. All right, so for the chapter, we have many members that are looking to become involved in ANNA. Mm -hmm. And so what we have done is we've mapped out what they can do to begin. First, of course, is to go to the website. 
and look up volunteer options. And then to select their membership, again moving forward, finding their chapter, mm -hmm. contacting chapter officers, asking about volunteer positions, and then showing up and being present and being there with mm -hmm. little directions on the back. Nice. Tell you the same thing. Nice. Kind of same thing for the national office, except that this time you'd end up calling the national office, find out what committees, spins, positions are available, mm -hmm. and then applying for them. Okay. And getting involved, again, with directions on the back for what to do. So we want the chapter offices to take these because this is gonna be a big help for them in yes. learning what to do as people come to them and ask them, how can I get more involved? Go. I think the friends are doing great things and I don't think our membership realizes just all the things that they're doing. We need to really advertise what those spins are doing. Go spins. Go spins. Yes, yes. I actually was talking to the new CKD spin leader, Dr. Anita Phillips okay. and Don, and she said she was feeling a little overwhelmed. Um, just when they send you all of the paperwork to sign and she's looking and she's like, oh my God, I got to do all of that. But the session that you guys had today um, for the spin leaders, she said it took a lot of that anxiety. That's good. So oh, whatever yeah. you did, That's great. whatever you did, um, it worked for her. And she made the same point that you did. A lot of people don't know that the spins are out there. And they I hope they realize that they have you know, resources like the board of directors, like the board of director liaison, you know, each other. Right. Um, and I think it was a good session today because they got to work like uh, publication, got to work with publication, and they got to see across spins just what they're doing, what they're planning, and I think that's going to help them as well. I agree. The amount of work that the spins have done is phenomenal. I direct new nurses into nephrology, into the spin sections of our website all the time. They have fact sheets, they have information that is so valuable. I love that. Thanks, Michelle. That's that's wonderful. And you're right. It's like a hidden diamond um, that A and A needs to just make people more aware. Of. Are you part of the spins, Jamie? Or I am not, but okay, I have but, been. Mm -hmm. So you know, even for the spin, even during my term, well, we publish articles in the NNJ. So the spins also need to be worried about publication in the NNJ. Yeah. Yeah. And that's a that's a really important piece because a lot of people are afraid of right. like, oh my gosh, publishing an article. Yes, exactly. like, it's a really big deal, but you're around to kind of help with that. And I know I've called on you a couple of times to kind of help me and just kind of look over, is this right? Am I doing this right? Um, and you've published many, many times in NNJ, and I've, I've read your work, so proud of you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, ladies. Thank you. <laughs> Bam. All right, this is Lillian again, and I am sitting here with Michelle Barnes. Barnes. She is a program manager for an acute program in Jacksonville, Florida. Mm -hmm. So, Michelle, first of all, tell me, how long have you been a member of ANA? &A? I just became a member, so this is my first time coming to nice. a conference. Okay, and tell me what from just from your first day, what do you what do you what have you experienced, and what were you looking to experience from the, um, from the conference? I really didn't know what I was going to experience, but from the first day. Um, it's been really pleasant, so I, I know that this is somewhere where we can learn a lot about our field and network and um, and progress. So there's a lot of information out there that I didn't know, so I'm excited about being a part of the ANA. &A, so. Great, great. All right, so I'm here with Roland. So Roland, since 1982, you've been in dialysis? I've been in dialysis since 1978. Wow. So you must have seen a lot of changes. A lot of changes. What's the, what's the most recent and the best one that you've seen so far? The best change I've seen is the education for the, for the nurses and the technicians. The technology has gotten really good. Okay. The education for the nurses and techs has gotten even better. So now we're, we're kind of getting to where we need to be. Because it was falling behind for the education. We're doing things like we used to do way back in the day. Now we're, we're catching up. Good. So it's getting safer for the patients, safer for our nurses and the technicians. What did you think about that opening session? Did you? It, it was interesting. Okay. It was interesting. Uh, it, it, it was very thought-provoking. Mm -hmm. Like what's going to happen, you know? Yeah. As as you know, 
as you think about getting older, you think about what's gonna what's gonna happen when they, I get taken care of. How what how's the technology gonna be then? Right. So it's it was pretty interesting. It, it made me think about what's gonna happen in the future. Okay. It's kind of scary, but it's kind of exciting. And I have caught up with past president Dr. Rowena Elliott, and I just want to thank you first of all for sitting down and, and speaking with me just a little bit. Glad to. Um, if you can, just tell me some of the the feelings and the, um, I guess maybe emotions a little bit about just being here mm-hmm. at the 55th, and then um, bring us back a little bit to your experience. You were national past president 2012, 2011, 2011 to 2012. 2012. Right. So tell me a little bit first about that. About and then the, about the president. past presidency, okay. yes, and then bring it forward to me, to to now. Okay. Okay. When I reflect on being, well, be currently being past president, but when I was past president, and I think about how things are now, it's like things have evolved so much. Mm-hmm. Um, the way the membership have changed, the way leadership have, has changed over. Um, over time since 2011, 2012, it has definitely evolved. And even the way we just look at nephrology, nursing mm-hmm. has evolved so much. Um, when I look at, um, and I'm probably gonna come back to being past president, but the thing that sticks out to me the most with this being our 55th year is when I first joined. And I was the director of nursing for a small outpatient unit. We had like five beds, I mean five chairs. and each one of the, um, we had three outpatient units in our nephrologist. He, uh, let me say, made sure, strongly suggested that <laughs> each, each one of the uh, director of nurses would become a member of ANA. And okay. he paid for it. Okay. And that's how I was exposed to ANA. Mm-hmm. And then started going to meetings and things like that. And I remember um, Gene Nardini was our president yeah. at that time. And I, and I remember going into one of the main sessions and when I looked up on the dais, I didn't see diversity. Yes. And that it was at that moment, I knew I wanted to be president. Because wow. I wanted it to be diversity in the membership. I mean, membership, I mean, I wanted it to be, excuse me, diversity in the leadership. I wanted our membership to be reflected in the leadership. Yes. And so I, yes. I, I, I asked her, people thought I was kind of, old ask her, but I asked Gina Dini at the time, what does it take to get up there? Uh-huh. And mm-hmm. she told me the steps and everything. So I went through those steps and, you know, got active at the local chapter, was active, and then ran for national secretary. I lost the first time, but that was a learning experience. Then right. won, and then ran for president-elect. So that has been my biggest reflection since I've been here. And to even see the changes over, that was in the 90s when I first joined. Yes. seeing the changes there but then seeing even evolving into now how things are so different yes um, how we look at nephrology is so different mm-hmm. teaching i mean treatment modalities have changed so much yep. and it's just it's been a transformation well i want to tell you thank you for that um and i, I didn't believe go on, no <laughs> no 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 that's that's what i want and i want to tell you for me um myself being the second mm-hmm. African American president. Um, that I think motivation came from seeing you there, mm. um, and so it just you know it it matters. Yeah, it matters, um, and it, it matters who you see right um, in these positions, right. and and it matters um, a lot, right. a lot, particularly to us. Right, and I just want to thank you for that. You're very welcome. I want to thank you for that. And I'm glad you said that because it really does matter. Um, It's one thing to be a nephrology nurse on the board or in the leadership position, but then it's another thing to be a person that has not been represented on that board because there's a different voice that comes to that table. Sure. It's not a voice that's lesser. It's a voice that contributes to the whole. And that voice is just as important as all other voices. Absolutely. Absolutely.
So I'm here with Lisa Hornberg from Tampa, Florida. Tampa, Florida. Yes. Lisa, I'm here looking at your poster, and we're just going to talk a little bit about your poster and explain it to me. But tell me a little bit about yourself, a little background, and how long you've been with A and A. Okay. Good. So, yep, I'm a I'm a nurse. I started in the ICU and then moved to nephrology probably within the first five years. Okay. I have now been in the industry for 28 years. Nice. And I joined. A ANA as soon as I moved into nephrology because I wanted the benefit of be networking with my colleagues and getting a lot of additional education. Yep. Okay, and you are from what state now? I Tampa. Live here in Tampa, Florida. Florida. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. So now tell me a little bit about your solutions to the nephrology workforce struggle. Yeah. Definitely a struggle. It is a struggle, and we need nurses to work in nephrology, whether it's with our company or wherever mm -hmm. um, they go to work. So we wanted to go upstream, and we wrote a nephrology specialty curriculum that we've made available in colleges and universities, because when I went through nursing school, I got about 15 minutes of education in nephrology. Exactly. <laughs> and so now we have this nice 16-week elective program that they can take nice. and get okay. exposure mm -hmm. and learn about different modalities. And then, then we breathe new life into our clinical internship program. So we have nurses coming into our facilities and getting hands-on experience with nephrology. Mm -hmm. And then we would love to flip them to a hire when possible. And okay. we support them for a year long with our residency program. Very nice, very nice. And this has been going on how long now? You're in about year three of the residency program mm -hmm. and about year two of our nephrology curriculum. Great, great. So you're seeing some good results? We or are. Too soon to tell? Or Yep. So we started by looking back historically, and we know that when we hire nurses as students mm -hmm. and hire them into DeVita, we have an 80% retention. So, yeah, mm -hmm. so that was worth pursuing a little bit more. Yes. And for sure in the residency program, when we look at nurses that are in the program versus those that are not, we have a 10% retention. So okay. we know that what we're doing, our investment in our nurses works. What's on the horizon mm -hmm. for a and mm -hmm. yeah. So tell me a little bit about your thoughts. I'll start with you, Leslie. Well, the obvious part is that it's the 55th anniversary. And... I was just telling Dave that my very first national meeting was the first independent meeting in 1983 in Philadelphia. So, and I've only missed two national meetings in all of that time since then. So it's very special for me to come to these meetings and celebrate nephrology nursing, but it's even become more special uh, since I've been on the boards and been president and such. And of course, this one in particular, We'll not only be celebrating 55 years, but we'll be celebrating having had Tony Gennetti taking such good care of a and &A, uh, all of these years, guiding us and, and celebrating us. I mean, So here we are. I am picking back up with past president Dave Walsh, and I also found Kristen Larson, who is currently on the board as secretary, and she will be signing off after tomorrow. Yes, I will be. All right. So Dave, yeah. just picking up, tell right. me, we're at the 55th, um, and just give me a little bit of your feelings of, of this moment, what a and &A has been to you, um, and especially during your presidency. Yeah. How was that? Well, I mean, when, when you originally asked the question, uh, yeah. the, the three R's came to mind, right? Mm -hmm. Just just reconnecting with, with individuals, past presidents, members. Uh, you know, this is an opportunity at the 50 50th to uh, reconnect, relearn, and re energize and re engage in, into the uh, organization. And so it's great to, to hear new things and, and the innovation that's coming about. And it's exciting, yet a little, uh, you know, a little apprehensive of where we're going. Are we going too quickly or, or not? Um, although, you know, I think ANA is staying on the forefront on some of these initiatives, and uh, that is, you know, it, it's just exciting to see, right? ANA &A kind of flourishing, uh, and hopefully we're we're here for another, you know, hundred years. So uh, that's that's yeah. the goal. Okay, okay, and I know some of the initiatives that the House of ANA &A was started under your under your mm. leadership. 
And so just to kind of see that start to come yeah. maybe more into focus and it's, how does that feel? Yeah, it, it's fantastic, right? The, the pillars of uh, infrastructure and brand and, and uh, uh, people, people, you know, and, and it takes great people like Kristen and, and yourself, right? As a, as a past president, you know, all these mentors and, and I've always looked up to, to the leaders of, of a and as well as the, the bedside nurses. That's where the true learning uh, occurs yep. every day. And so, uh, uh, you know, the infrastructure, that group is doing some amazing work of really building the basis of a and to, to be built upon. Yeah. Uh, the people, obviously, that's what makes it run. And, yeah. and really reinvesting in our people is, is uh, uh, importance. And then the, yeah. the brand, right? Of how do we be recognized by not only inside of nephrology, but outside of nephrology as well as, as an expert. Your experience the last two years on the board, uh, you just heard some of the things that Dave talked about um, and just his vision and, and just seeing able, being able to see some of his vision come to fruition. You don't see it kind of when you're in it. Um, so tell me a little bit about your experience, um, maybe year one and then year two. And tell me the role that you feel you played in moving a and forward. Well, I would say year one is the learning year because joining the board, you really don't realize all the moving parts that happen at the national office, that happen at the board level, that make everything happen. When I came you know, as a participant, as a chapter president, uh, this is really all that you see is the national meeting and then what you do at the local level. When you become part of the board, it's like it elevates the intricacy of how a professional organization works and then how much energy goes into it, how much love and determination. I mean, people pour their heart and soul in this. I mean, you, 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 you can't help but not do that. Um, the first year is just getting your feet wet so that by the time you head your second year, it's like, oh, okay, now I don't feel like a freshman anymore. Now I'm sitting in a senior spot. This is a really good feeling. So second year, I would say, is where you become more vocal. So probably one of the better things is that uh, really becoming more vocal, sometimes for the better, some, sometimes um, ruffling maybe a few feathers. But as we heard in our opening speaker, um, that, you know, sometimes you need change. Change takes a little disruptive. A di disruption is disruptive. Um, and I would like to say that perhaps I was part of that. Uh, we moved things along. And what I'm most proud of, most excited for is the membership committee, which will be focusing on students, yes. which bringing yes. in an entire fold of young people, um, as well as mentoring our own yes. and having a true formal mentorship program um, and being an educator and a college professor myself. Um, it's a perfect fit for me. So I look forward to taking that on tomorrow. All right. Well, now I have found another past president from year, tell me, Betty. 1973. And, yes. <laughs> and she looks absolutely fabulous. It's a long time ago. Yes. She has her daughter here with her, and she's looking gorgeous. We are at the gala, but I wanted to steal her away for a few minutes just to ask her a couple of questions. Sure. So tell me, what's your fondest memory from a and &E? Past president or not? Well, uh, my fondest memories are early on, mm -hmm. early, okay. when nurses would go to the doctor's meetings with them, to a SIO or ASN, you know, mm -hmm. and we would not understand what was going on, yeah. okay, it was over our head. And as nurses, we would kind of get together in a little group afterwards, you know, and talk okay. about nursing things. Yeah. So I think my, some of my fondest memories are in the beginning. Okay. <laughs> when? We wouldn't have big exhibit halls and all this stuff. Uh -huh. They would have hospitality suites, okay. you know. And so we would gather in the hospitality suite and we would talk about things that's related to nursing. Nice. Okay. Nice. And then over a period of two or three years, we said, you know, we really need to have our own organization mm -hmm. so we can just talk about nursing. So from the first conference that I went to in 1966, then there was a 1967, uh, 68, 69, mm -hmm. and 69, we did the official starting of the organization. That's amazing. So I am here at the exhibits for the uh, 55th a and &A, um, anniversary symposium, and I am here with three first-time attendees. We have... 
Um, my name's Brooke. From? Uh, Maine. Maine. Mariana Pierce. From? Virginia. Virginia. And? Stephanie Menzel from South Carolina. All right. South Carolina, so I'm in Georgia, so we're not too far away from each other. Okay. So just want to ask you, what's your, what's your take or what, what has your experience been so far? Um, we had a wonderful speaker uh, just now. What do you what do you think about what do you think about that? Um, I just really opened my eyes to things I didn't even, I guess, consider could be mm -hmm. a part of um, healthcare, like the upcoming technologies and stuff. Mm -hmm. I thought mm -hmm. that was very eye opening. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. How about you? And for me, I've been around a long time. I've been in race for a long time. And this AI and stuff is like, okay, this is the future. I gotta stop for it to change. Yeah. And I think change is needed. It can't is. Keep it fast, is. can't keep up with the patients. It's just been very challenging. Okay. So I think the AI and all that'll be helpful. I think so. So what, we, what you missed was there was a talk, and uh, she was just talking about basically the future of healthcare. Um, and so, tell me a little bit about your position and what you're doing um, with Fresenius in South Carolina. Are you inpatient? Are you acute? So I'm actually you... a quality manager. I oh, came great. from Chronic, okay. um, did in-center, you know, floor nurse for a while, and then I was in-center manager for a few years and did home therapies. So now I um, help out managers, staff, do a lot of staff training on improving patient outcomes. Okay. So I go around to over 20 different clinics in the South Carolina area. Okay. Now, what kind of what kind of data do you have to collect? Um, a lot of data that you use to, to kind of help, I guess, guide those outcomes right. for so, those patients. You know, just your quality indicators, our reports that we give, which we have, you know, CQS. Okay. Um, so we look at those different scores, and then you go and deep dive into it and see, you know, catheter rates, anemia, mm -hmm. adequacy, all that stuff. Okay. And then. Helping managers, newer managers, um, going out on the training floor, working with the staff to, you know, things that they can do better to improve those different APIs. Okay. So now, how long have you been in, in nursing now? In nursing. In dialysis nursing. In dialysis since 2015. Since 2015. Okay. And what were you prior to that? What were you doing prior to? In the hospital. In the hospital. Yeah, med surge ICU. Oh, okay. Okay. So. I've been told either you love dialysis or you hate it. What do you think? <laughs> I love it. I love it. I fell in love with it. I'm never going anywhere else. Okay. Okay. It's been my first job straight out of nursing school. I graduated with my BSN in 2021. Okay. And so I've been in in-center dialysis for coming on three years and I'm I love every second of it. Great. What do you love most about it? What what made you so passionate about it. I guess what in nursing school they kind of migrate you to you need to be in a hospital setting and I knew I was gonna miss the relationships you build with patients because unfortunately with hospitals patients are in and out so quickly um, but with dialysis you build rapport with the patients you get to know them they become a part of your family in a sense mm -hmm. um, and I really really appreciate that <coughs> mm -hmm. I value that a lot. Good. Good. Tell me a little bit about your. Me, I started in the 90s. Mm -hmm. um, I was an LPN. I'm actually a nurse practitioner now. And I did PSD in primary care. Now I'm an nephrology nurse practitioner. Okay. And I like being good at something. Okay. I'm, my nursing experience and my nurse practitioner experience is really beneficial for the patients. Because I know what the nurses need. I'm that bridge between the nurses and the doctors. Nice. And I nice. Tell the doctor, you don't know how to work a machine. I don't know how to run a machine. You don't. But we don't know how to manage uh -huh. the disease. So and you, you do. Both sides. So I get both sides. And That's I perfect. feel I'm good at it. I've been doing it so long. And I, and I share a lot of my experience with the patients and with the nurses. So now I've heard from quality, I've heard from my nurse practitioner with years of experience, and my new nurse. And what I can hear from all of you is this that your combined experience is that you, you love nephrology nursing. Well, that's it for this month's perspective. This is Lillian Pryor, and thank you for listening. Please be sure to join me the first of every month for another episode of ANNA's Nephrology Nursing Perspectives.
Nephrology Nursing Perspectives is owned and produced by the American Nephrology Nurses Association, all rights reserved. No portion of this podcast may be used without written permission. Dr. Lillian Pryor is Dialysis Program Manager at Encompass Health Rehabilitation Hospital of Henry. A member of the American Nephrology Nurses Association since 1990, Dr. Pryor has served in roles that include President-Elect, ANNA Director, ANNA Awards and Scholarship Committee Chairperson, ANNA Representative to the Kidney Health Initiative Patient Preference Task Force, and an author and peer reviewer for the Nephrology Nursing Journal. Dr. Pryor served as the 2020-2021 President of the American Nephrology Nurses Association. In addition, she is an active member of ANNA's Dogwood Chapter in Georgia and has served the chapter as both its President and Health Policy Representative. For archived episodes of this and all ANNA podcasts, and to learn more about the American Nephrology Nurses Association, visit ANNANurse.org. You can also subscribe to Nephrology Nursing Perspectives everywhere podcasts are found.